Uh, the 50th anniversary of the building of the Berlin Wall is a big deal in Germany this year. Germany really uh, takes its history very seriously, just as they've dealt with the Holocaust. So now they're dealing with the legacy of the East German communist regime and the Berlin Wall. You know, after the Berlin Wall fell by mistake in 1989 and Germany united in 1990, uh, the Cold War soon ended and the Soviet Union collapsed, and that meant that uh, not only were people much happier living in freedom, but it meant that we scholars uh, and historians could get into the archives. Most people thought during the Cold War that Moscow and Washington dominated everything, and that since the communists built the wall, it must have been Moscow who was the driving force behind this decision to seal the border around West Berlin. Uh, in fact, Moscow did not want to do this. The leader of the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev, who succeeded Joseph Stalin, um, resisted East German pleas from the East German leadership, uh, resisted these for eight years. The Soviets told the East Germans, no, you can't close the border. You've got to find another way to keep your people happy and to make East Germany uh, an attractive place for people to live. But the East German leader, Walter Ulbricht, was um, a very hardline communist leader. He also was obsessed with his own power, and perhaps he had more of a realistic sense than the Soviet leaders did that without closing the border, the country would collapse. Because, of course, look what happened in 1989. When the wall opened, um, sure enough, the East German leadership essentially lost all control. And uh, so the East German leader in 1961, Walter Ulbricht, um, pushed and pushed to get Soviet permission to seal the border and build the Berlin Wall. Of course, the 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 Berlin Wall is alive in people's imagination and recollection, uh, particularly here in the United States. Um, the Berlin Wall was and still always is seen as the symbol of tyranny, the symbol of a system that is not democratic, uh, when people cannot do what they want in so many ways. And travel is the most obvious. Um, you couldn't get through that wall. Um, but its, its legacy, both for how terrible it was and how it caused so many people to suffer and how it really stood as a symbol of uh, communist regimes, um, it also lives on um, due to its happy ending and um, the wonderful, peaceful way in which protesters on the streets uh, in East Germany pushed and pushed for more freedom, including the freedom to travel, and um, ultimately they brought about the peaceful fall of the wall. The process leading to the building of the wall and the fall of the wall um, was completely different. The building of the wall was a long, drawn-out, eight-year process of the Soviet and East German leaders discussing the problem of the open borders and how East Germans were fleeing communism to go to the West, to go to democracy and capitalism in the West. So um, that was a well-planned, long thought out operation to build the wall. Whereas in 1989, when the wall came down, it was a mistake. Uh, there was no plan. It wasn't supposed to open. It was an unprepared senior East German official at a press conference who mistakenly announced that new travel regulations would take effect immediately and that that meant that people could go through the Berlin Wall. Um, that was not the case, but uh, the power of the media was such that journalists started reporting um, that this official had announced the border was open, and so tens and then hundreds and then thousands of people went to the border crossing points, and ultimately the border guards gave up and let them through. So um, this sort of mistaken event of 1989 is very different from the long, a uh, complicated process leading to the very well-planned building of the wall in 1961. 
As a result of all of my research in the 1990s in the archives in Moscow and Berlin, I was able to publish a book, Driving the Soviets Up the Wall, in English in 2003. And this year in 2011, that has been published in German as Ulbricht's Mauer. The book explains the decision-making process between the Soviets and the East Germans in the eight years leading up to the building of the wall and finds that contrary to popular belief, in fact, it was the East German leadership that was the main force pushing to close the border and build the wall. The Soviets didn't want that because they knew that they would look terrible, and the Soviets finally gave in, and the East German leader got what he wanted, in sealing the border in Berlin.